What's going on everyone? Garnet Walters here again, and I'd like to thank you for checking out this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please press the subscribe button and also press that little bell. That's a notification button so you know whenever new videos are available. Um, for those who have subscribed, I'd like to thank you for your support. It really means a lot. So I've been getting this question pretty frequently lately, and instead of answering that question over and over again, I figure I just make one video out of it. This video is about the top 10 books that influenced me musically. It was a really tough list for me to make because I have a lot of books. I have, you know, bookshelf full of books and I have one, two, three, three big containers of books. So it took a lot for me to try and limit this list to 10. So without further ado, here are my top 10 books that influenced me musically. So let's start off with the first book. The first book that influenced me musically is Hearing and Writing Music by Ron Garot. This is actually one of my favorite books. Um, I keep going back to it. You know, I've had this book for over 15 years and I still go back to it to get information and also to refresh myself in terms of, uh, you know, the concepts that are in the book. Um, I find it to be really, really helpful because it talks about the science behind music, also talks about like intervals and it's very, uh, you know, thorough, especially talking about theory and ear training and reading and stuff. I even wrote the author an email and he responded and, you know, helped me through some aspects of the book. So I found that to be pretty cool as well. So hearing and writing music is the number one book on my list. The second book that's on the list is A Musician's Way by Gerald Clickstein. The book talks about how to practice, talks about your mindset, it talks about um, different steps on how to improve and having it stick with you. Um, so I find that this book is really, really helpful. The third book on the list is The Jazz Theory Book slash The Jazz Piano Book by Mark Levine. These are two separate books, just so you know. Um, the first book that came out was The Jazz Piano Book. And I love that book because it talked about reharmonizations and how to voice chords and stuff. And it had like theory, you know, with the modes and um, had like really cool chord voicings like Mogul Miller and lines from like Herbie and, and Bud Powell and stuff. So there were musical examples that went with, you know, the, the, the concept that was being taught. The fourth book on the list is Jazz Piano Harmony by Bill Dobbins. So, I love this book because, again, the examples were very clear and thorough, um, it's very concise, uh, the exercises are practical, like you can use them in musical situations, it's not just to get your chops up, like you get a lot of information from learning the chords and learning how to hear as well. Um, they have like exercises that have to do with block chords and then you have exercises and examples that have like drop two voices and things like that and again I go back to that book all the time too because there's some things where I need to you know refresh my memory on so I, I go back to that book all the time it also has a section on how to practice as a jazz musician so I can take some things from that as well just to get some ideas book number five so the fifth book on this list is modern jazz piano by Brian Waite uh, what got me in this book was there was a chart in the middle of the book that has all the voicings in terms of uh, harmony and stuff. So it had like one, three, five, seven, and that was a major seven chord, you know, one flat three, five flat seven, it's a minor seven chord. And it showed them as numbers, which was really interesting because I can plug in whatever notes I want as long as it fits that formula. On top of that, it goes into upper extensions. And not only does it spell out the upper extensions, but it also spells it out as a triad. So I find that, you know, with the numbers in the chart, it made everything a lot easy to transpose and put different notes in there and not have to, you know, overthink about what the chord is supposed to sound like. And they also have a section where they have poly chords where you can put chords on top of chords which is pretty cool. And again, the information in that book is really great. It's very concise, very clear, and very thorough. There are musical examples. But that chart that's in that book, and the, the chart was like maybe four or five pages, but 
that chart was a game changer because I could see everything, you know, in plain sight. Book number six. So the sixth book on this list is The Keyboard Grimoire by Adam Cademan. Uh, this book was very influential because it pretty much showed all the formulas or formulae, however you want to uh, say it. It shows all of the makeups of the different chords and scales and modes. So it covered the major scale, it covered pentatonics, it covered pilon or pelon, however you want to pronounce it. So uh, everything is written out as numbers, so you can just plug in whatever note you want and then you can be able to figure it out from there. Um, it, does a, it also has a section where it shows chord scale relationships. So it shows the scale of the mode and then it shows you what chords you can draw from that scale or mode, which is really, really interesting. So book number seven is a book that I started reading recently and it's called Chopin, Pianist and Teacher by Gene Eigeldinger. Eigeldinger, I think that's how you pronounce it. This book was a game changer for me because I love Chopin's music, I love the etudes, and I wanted to know what would it have been like to take lessons with Chopin. So once I saw the book, I had to get it. And I downloaded it on iBooks on the iPhone, and I was blown away by the information that I got. In that book, he talks about technique, he talks about practicing, he talks about what your mindset should be. I'm not going to give away too much about the book because I'm, I, I want you to check it out and see what you can glean from it as well. But it's a great read, it was a great read and again I go back to it and sometimes I have to read read a chapter because there was so much and I wanted to you know at least put what I've read into practice. The eighth book on this list is The Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns by Slanimsky. This book was an amazing book, and it is, still is an amazing book. Um, I remember getting it my first year in college in 2001. Uh, one of my professors told me about it, so start starting off in school, I'm like, okay, I need to get the book. So I got the book, and there was so much information in that book. That when I say it's a thesaurus, it really is a thesaurus. It's about this thick. So, in the book, you have all these crazy lines and stuff. And the concept of the book is that you have an octave and they divide the octave in half or in quarters or in thirds, depending on the pattern that you're looking for. And once you divide the octave, then you build the line off of those points. So for example, if you have C and C is an octave, if you cut it in half, you get F sharp. So then the pattern starts on C, you do the same pattern again in F sharp, and then you do a pattern again in C. So I'm, I haven't even scratched the surface in that book because there's so many different ideas and stuff. And it's a great book to have. Um, it's also said that John Coltrane had the book, so that should be another reason to go and get it. So book number nine is A Chromatic Approach to Jazz Harmony and Melody by David Liebman. This book was a weird one. I'm just going to say that from the jump. It was a weird one. I bought the book because I loved the concepts, but where I was musically, it didn't, it, it, I, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't digest all that information right then and there because I felt like my foundation needed to be, you know, shored up a little bit more. But I, uh, but I love the ideas and I kind of grabbed some of the concepts. So I had to put that book to the side for a little bit. And then after a while, you know, I went back to the book and things started to make sense because um, my musical foundation was already set. So um, I ended up reading the book and interestingly it's written by a saxophone player. As a keyboard player, as a piano player, I like to hear what single line instrument players think about. So with David Liebman being a saxophone player, I figured why not, you know, check out the book and, and, and understand where he comes from. And it's mind blowing. So this is a really good book to get. Last but not least, this book is actually not a book, but it's a set of books. It's actually a trilogy. So it's written by Mick Gurrich, who's also known as Mr. Good Chord. Um, he had a set of books where he talked about how to connect one chord to another diatonically, 
you know, in the major scale, the minor scale, like uh, the harmonic minor scale, the melodic minor scale, and it was pretty much a book of formulas or formulae, however you want to pronounce it. So he talks about how to connect from chord to chord, and the formula is either based on intervals, notes, or scale degrees. So it depends on how you grasp the information the quickest. So it's not just a you know a cookie cutter thing where you just have to get it one way and that's it. And it's a very extensive book. Even though they're out of print and maybe you can find it on eBay, there is good news though. If you Google Mr. Good Chord, you'll see some PDFs that come up from Keyboard Magazine. And that wealth of information is in that article. So you get the concept from that article without getting the book. So those are the top 10 books that influenced me musically. It was a tough list to make because again, I have so many books, but these books really impacted my musical journey. Um, if you like the video, please press the like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button. Please press the bell so you can know when new videos come out. And if you have any books that influenced you musically, please put them in the comments below because I wanna know what books influenced you. Thank you for your support and have a good one.